Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PD Worski, the Toronto Website Developer. And in this eighth video tutorial on, on Bootstrap, I want to show you how we can create a JavaScript pop-up, otherwise known as a modal. That said, I'm over at Toronto Website Developer.com. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. They're only $20, um, and the more you buy, the more you save. Alternatively, you can also buy the book, which is How to Become a White Hat Hacker. It's just the price of $20, but it's only $10. With the tutorials, the more you buy, the more you save. And each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20, but you do want to help out, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. With all that said, let's head back over to our development site. And in tutorial seven, you saw that we created this slideshow. Now I've gone ahead and added this button right above it. And when you click it, we get this nice JavaScript pop-up and you see that it kind of faded in. And I've got the title, and then I've got a little bit of text, and then two buttons for closing and saving, as well as an X up here. I'm going to show you how we can create that. It's actually pretty easy. Um, oops, kind of giving away the, the goods here. Um, we're going to open up index.html, and we're exactly where we left off before. We have this div ID uh, dog carousel. And I'm going to copy in code, and we're going to walk through it together uh, because there's a lot to type, but um, it's a little bit misleading. So. First thing we're going to do is actually create our button. So here underneath the container, I'm just going to paste in some code and I'm going to walk you through it. You'll see I've got an HTML comment just denoting that we're adding a button. And then I've got this uh, button type. Uh, so the button is the actual HTML element, and then type is equal to button. And then in terms of the class, you've seen this before, we're adding BTN, BTN primary, and then we're making it large. Uh, so that's what BTN LG is. You could obviously take that out or make it BTL-SM for small. The data do uh, toggle, you want to uh, include that as a modal, and then the data target is going to be the ID that we set for our div for the modal. You'll see that coming up. It's just similar to the carousel. And then you'll see I just got some text in here and then uh, the button. So this text could be whatever you want it to be. Uh, I'm just using the example from uh, the Bootstrap documentation where it's launch demo modal. Now, now that we have the, the actual button, I'm going to copy all the modal text in all at one time and walk you through it so that you understand kind of what's going on and then I'll show you how we can we can customize it. So first thing you need to do is have a div that's going to wrap um, everything and so that has to have the class modal um, and fade is optional. If you include fade you'll get that nice JavaScript um, animation. If you don't include it it will just kind of be there. Uh, so play with it, check it out. The ID as I mentioned before is anything you want it to be. We've got my modal but that has to reflect what's going on here in the data target for my modal. Then the tab index, you're going to want to include that minus one. All that does is set the focus on the actual modal that you just created. Uh, role dialog, you have to add that. And then the area labeled by, I just learned this, this is an accessibility tag. So that's what that is. Uh, and it's for screen readers. So again, that's going to be anything describing kind of what's going on with your modal. Next thing, we've got a div class modal dash dialog. Again, you're going to have to include that in the role equals document. So that's going to be the div. Now we get to the meat of the actual modal where we're going to be defining our content. And so as a result, we're including a div class, which is modal dash content. Here we have a header, we have a body, and we have footer. And so I'll just add some lines here so it makes it a little bit clearer that you can see it's kind of three pieces. So I know it looks like a lot of text but really it breaks down into easy digestible chunks when you really think about it. So we're going to have a div class and that's going to be the modal dash header. That's what's that kind of header bar that we had up at the top. And again, you're going to include a button here and the class is going to be closed. And then data dismiss equals modal. Um, and then again, your area tag is just an accessibility thing. And this span area hidden and percent times, um, what that means is, for screen readers, we want to put the X, and um, so that's an accessibility thing there. So that's why that's included, um, and that is all there. So you get that nice fancy X in the top right. So you want to make sure to uh, include that, and the class equals closes what's providing that for you. Then within the actual div itself, underneath the button, you have an H4. This could be H1, H2, whatever you want it to be. Uh, you can play with it, um, but the class here has to be modal title, uh, and then the ID is my modal label can be anything you want it to be, and then the content, obviously. That closes up the header. Next, you have the, the modal body. So again, this can be anything. I just threw in an H4, uh, some P tags, 
anything you want it to be. This can even be a form if you added a form group, but then you have to react to it on the JavaScript event. And so that's beyond the scope of this. If there's interest, I can do a tutorial on that, but I need some feedback in the comments. So again, add a div class, has to have modal body, put whatever you want in there. To close this all off, you're gonna add modal footer as a final class. And then here, we've just added two buttons. And so you've got button default, button primary, um, but you want to add the data dash sub, uh, dismiss on the modal itself for the close um, and save changes. Obviously, if you were doing this and you actually had some changes, you'd have to react to that JavaScript event. Um, if you're curious about that, there's documentation at getbootstrap.com slash JavaScript. Um, you can find the modal section there. I think it's like, um, it's not hashtag, it's pound uh, modal or something like that. Um, sorry, I was looking at something else. So yeah, modals. Um, and then you're going to close up that div and really that's all that there is. Um, let's create that and then I'll show you just briefly how we can customize that. So when we go to our index page now, you'll see we the exact same thing. Launch demo pops up. This is what I was talking about in terms of the header. This is our body. This is our footer and it's all denoted by the, the two lines and then that X that we were talking about. And then I can close that. If we wanted to, that was a bit of a wider modal. We can make that thinner and I'm drawing a blank on where we actually put that in. Okay. Yeah, I've got it. So here in the div class modal dash dialog, you would just do modal dash large or let's do small here. Let's go back to our site, reload this guy, click on this. Doesn't look different. Um, we put that in right. Oh, it's not model. Sorry about that. There's the small guy. And then if we actually scroll this in, you'll see that it's responsive as well. Um, and then if you wanted to see large, just for the hell of it, and let's take out the fade so you can see what that looks like as well. Reload our page. Here's the large, and you saw it just kind of just there, just appears. There's no fade in or anything like that. Um, so that's modals. Hopefully that helped you out. Again, you can put anything you want in there. It could have been images, could have been a form. Um, but if you do accept any type of content or there's anything that you need to get from a user, you need to react to that uh, JavaScript event and do that. Uh, but that's it for this video tutorial. Again, if it helped you, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, and let me know. And hopefully we'll see you for what is tutorial number nine, I guess. Thanks very much for watching.